Hey Dollhouse people, Whitney the Brie here and this week we are going to be working on a fall themed room box and we're going to start with some no sew pillows and bedding. I'm really excited to start this because I am a person who loves all the holidays including the Thanksgiving holiday. I have lots in store for you today so let's get started. To start with, this is the box that I'm going to be using. I found this very beautiful autumn themed gift box or storage box at my local hobby store. I love it because it's a really good size. It's about 13 by 19. It has great color. I'm going to be able to decorate this box to make it look like a little fall themed room, but I'm also gonna be able to use it as storage when the season is over and I can store it away with my other fall decorations. So this is the bed that I'm going to be using today. It has some damage, the spindles are broken. I'm not going to be using the fabric that you see there, but we're not gonna really be doing a refurb on the bed itself today. I'm just gonna be focusing on the no-sew pillows and bedding, and then we'll do a refurb on the bed in a later show. But you can see here that I can just store this bed right in this box, and I'll be able to store the other accessories that we'll be making, and then I can just put this away and then pull it out every season and enjoy it for years to come. It'll be like a little gift to myself, right? <laughs> now, if you're working with a refurbished bed like how I'm doing here, the next step for you will be to remove the, at least the top cushion if, you're, if you have a top cushion because we need a nice flat surface to do this project. I might remove the additional fabric as well. I'm not quite sure I need to yet but most likely I will. But I'm gonna go ahead and start by just removing the pillow. And if you're anything like me, you'll probably keep this pillow and use it in some sort of other project in the future. This is why dollhouse people, we tend to be little hoarders because we feel like everything can be used for something else. So grab some good scissors. Don't use your fabric scissors though, if you have those on this part. The reason being is because there's this is attached with glue, many of them are, and you don't want to use your fabric scissors on cutting glue. The next step will be to grab a nice piece of cardstock in whatever color, it doesn't really matter, and you're going to measure out your bed. For me, it's going to be five inches across and two and a quarter inches tall and about six and a half inches long. And I am going to measure out those measurements. Now, on the top where it's five inches wide, I'm going to actually just go over about a quarter inch on each side because I'm going to be building a complete bed stencil in a sense and I want it to hang over really nice on the edges and if you do it exact then it's not going to fold on the sides correctly and that might be a little confusing right now but when I show you the end result here of the cardstock you'll see what I mean. Now, once your cardstock is cut out, I'm just laying it on top of the bed and I'm just doing some double measurements just to make sure everything is correct. At this point, I'm going to double check my measurements for the top and for the sides. And once I know that the sides are the correct measurements, I'm going to draw a line across from one end to the other. And this is where I'm going to make my folds. Now you might be asking yourself, why is she doing it on the cardstock and not doing it directly on the bed? Well, I want you to wait to the end of the, of the video so that you can see the method to my madness here and why I'm doing it this way. So a real easy way to fold cardstock without creating uneven creases is just take your ruler and slide it right up to the line that you're going to fold and then fold in over your ruler. It will give you much better, cleaner creases in cardstock than drawing a line and then just trying to hand fold it without the ruler. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put that cardstock over my bed. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm just gonna make sure that it is a beautiful fit. And if it isn't and you need to make any adjustments, this is the time to make the adjustment on the cardstock. Now, if you do not have a footboard on the bed that you're working with, you will need to make an additional fold 
folded piece at the foot so that your cardstock will be almost like a little box without one end to it, okay? This is what that would look like if you did it without a footboard. Okay, and now after fitting my cardstock stencil over my bed, I do think I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bottom fabric. And lucky for me, it's coming off pretty easily. So that's how I'm gonna work with the bed going forward today. Okay, so let's talk fabric. There are so many fun fabrics to choose from. And in this case, I've chosen three fabrics for my bedding. I have a, a multi-print one here, which is this gorgeous truck, autumn truck fabric with all of these autumn essentials, right? Leaves, acorns, pumpkins, sweaters. I mean, you name it, it's on it. This is the fabric that I'm going to use for my top bedding or the quilt, the comforter portion and one sun of accent pillows, okay? And now I'm using all cotton fabrics here, easy to iron, easy to cut, easy to work with, all right? And then I have this orange gingham print here. Orange gingham I'm going to use as an accent pillow. And then this, this orange and gold fabric here, I'm going to be using as my bottom and top sheet and one set of pillows as well. And I purchased these in quarter cuts is how I purchased them. I'm not gonna be using that much fabric, but I like to have extra in case I make mistakes. And then if I really love it, I might actually make more or mix up the fabrics in different ways for more bedding later. Now it's time to start cutting our fabric out. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cardstock stencil that I made and I'm gonna place it onto the backside of my fabric and I'm gonna try to line it up as straight as I can because I want my dots to be pretty straight. And I would suggest ironing it ironing the fabric before you cut. You can see here that I haven't done that <laughs> quite yet. And I'm gonna cut out, for my first cut, I cut out about an inch all the way around just to make sure that I had enough fabric. But really, we're gonna be folding this up and underneath the cardstock. So I wouldn't go really less than a half an inch. I would say really around an inch to half an inch, I would say. This will also give you a little bit of uh, room for mistakes, all right? And then in this case, I ironed it after I cut it, but I think that you should iron it before. It would certainly make it easier and you'll make your cuts more accurate also. All right, and then once your fabric is nice and ironed, the next step is going to be to place your cardstock in the center. And then I'm just choosing two corners and I'm taking my glue gun and I'm doing the smallest dot of glue. I'm only doing this in this situation because I want that cardstock to stay put while I make my fabric cuts. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start taking my fabric scissors and I'm going to start cutting the fabric at the creases and folding it over the cardstock and using a little bit of glue gun glue to keep those fabric pieces in place. And I'm making sure that the folds are nice and tight. I want it, because this is the bottom sheet to the bedding, I want this to be really nice and tight, nice and tight folds. And I'm just gonna keep going around the whole piece of cardstock, just cutting and folding and gluing, cutting, folding, and gluing. And then when you're done with that first step, you should have a completely covered piece of cardstock here with a nicely fit bottom sheet. All right, and then from here, what we're going to do is we're gonna start making our fabric cuts for the top of the bedding or the quilt portion, and then also the top sheet. And what I wanna do with the comforter part of the bedding is I'm going to look for an area of print that makes the most sense for what's going to be shown on the bedding. So I really want to make sure that I cut around this truck with the pie, and I really like this corn, and there's a couple other little prints on here that I really want to show on the bedding. So I'm gonna cut in the area where those pieces are. And then of course, I'm measuring it out again, and you can see I'm going a little bit more of an inch around, and again, that's just me being overly cautious about mistakes. So you may not need to do that. Now at the top, I do wanna cut a little extra fabric. I would say about two inches. And the reason is I'm going to be folding over that top portion as though you would fold over a real bed when you make it, when you just fold down the top area to leave room for pillows. And so I'm going to 
cut at the top about two inches extra. That will give me the amount of space that I'm going to need to make the folds that I wanna make to make it look like a, a nicely made bed with the blanket folded over at the top, All right? And you can see there that I'm just folding the fabric to make sure that I'm going to be able to get a nice crease so it looks like the top portion of the bedding has been folded down. Okay, now once I've completed that, I'm going to take some more of my orange and gold polka dot fabric and I just cut a slice off about three inches deep and the length of the bedding width. So I went all the way across, so that's five and a quarter inches and then two half on each side. So it's about 11 inches long and about three inches wide. What I'm doing here is I'm taking that fabric and you need to face it down, print down. So when you fold it up and over the actual print, you can see it. You can see here, I've tucked it up I folded it over so that it looks like the top sheet is folded over the top of your blanket. Now what I did is I just took two little dabs of my glue gun and that's just to hold it in place. I did a very little bit of glue. There is another product that we're going to be using in a little bit that you could also use right there. And we'll talk about that product here in a little bit. Now I'm just making sure that everything fits because at this point I could still undo the fabric and make any adjustments that I need to make if I need to do that right now. And once I'm comfortable with how it looks, so now it looks like a sheet has been folded and tucked underneath the blanket at the top. Now that I like it and everything's in place, I'm going to go ahead and iron everything down to give it just some really nice creases. And this will also help keep the folds during the next step. So once we've reached this point, we are going to do the same cutting and folding that we did with the bottom sheet. We're just gonna flip that card stock over, our bottom sheet over, and we are gonna start folding in the fabric. Now, if you've cut your fabric to a length where it's gonna fold into the center crease, go ahead and cut that fabric off because you don't want any fabric in the creases of your card stock. If you have any fabric in the creases, it will cause too much bulk bulkiness and your cardstock will not fit over your bedding. So just make sure that your fabric is not in any of the creases, okay? And I am just using my glue gun again to keep this fabric in place. And I don't really want a lot of loose fabric, so I'm gluing it down pretty well. Now, when it comes to the piece of fabric that's going to hang down in your footboard area, you do not want to cut and fold that piece in, all right? You want to make sure that that piece is going to be hanging down the same length as the fabric on the sides, which in this case is two and a quarter inches. When you cut the fabric, you can cut it two different ways. You can cut it and then fold in the sides to give it a nice clean cut, or you have the option not to, all right? And that's gonna be really up to you. If you're concerned that your fabric might fray on the ends, then I would suggest folding it in but if you're not concerned about that, obviously you can leave it alone. And I've done it both ways for you here so you can see both sides. The bottom though, I definitely suggest that you at least fold that up because that will fray over time for certain and you want it to be a nice, clean, straight bottom edge, all right? So in that fabric, it. You know, I, I left a little extra. You can see I almost have two, a little over two and a half inches cut, and I'm just gonna fold it up about half an inch to give me a two and a half inch length on the bottom, all right? And so that fabric kinda hangs loose, all right? And it's gonna look really nice once we put it on the bed. So let's go ahead and we're gonna test out our bedding so far and see what it looks like on the bed. All right, so I'm just gonna slide the bottom portion in first. There's a little crease in between the bed and the footboard that I'm just going to slide that into. All right, and I'm going to pull it through nice and tight and then lay that down. And so far, it looks pretty good. It's, it's how I want it to look so far. 
Now I'm a girl who likes a lot of pillows. You do as many pillows as you want, but for this bed, I'm gonna do one set of shams, decorative shams, and then I'm going to do a set that matches the bed sheets, and then I'm gonna do one accent pillow. The way that I'm gonna start off is I'm gonna take more of my cardstock and I'm gonna cut out a stencil. And because my bed is about five and a quarter in width, I am going to do about three inches in my stencil, a three inch across and a little over two inches wide. And that's because I have to take in account for gluing the edges and so I'm going to make them a little larger So that way once they're glued they'll fit on the bed nice and neat and once I have my stencil I'm gonna go ahead and cut out enough fabric to do the amount of pillows that I'm gonna need And so in this case, I'm gonna need four of my shams Which is my printed fabric and then four of my orange and gold polka dot fabric And then I'm gonna go ahead and iron them out and make them a nice and flat. All right, so now I have got this new product that I wanted to talk about. It's called Heat and Bond Ultra Hold, and this is what we're going to be using for the rest of the project. Technically, you could actually use this for well, everything that we did in the beginning, but most of us have a glue gun and glue sticks, so I figured I'd show you how to do it both ways. Also, by the way, this product, you can actually, I have a link in the description below. I am an Amazon affiliate for this product, and so, of course, if you buy it through my site yes I make a little bit of that but this product is under three dollars so I'm not really making that much I also bought the thicker kind because I like to I like to pull it apart and then cut it down to the size I need so this works out great so now I'm going to cut off a very thin strip of the heat and bond and you can see I'm placing it at the top edge there and those are gonna be the sides of my pillow and I'm going to put print down and then fold it back toward the backside of the fabric to make a nice clean fold at the top of the pillow. And I'm gonna go ahead and iron it down. Watch your fingers. And you can see how I have one nice, very clean edge. And I'm going to do that with the other piece of fabric or the other side of the pillow as well. And then you can see here that when I put them together, print side together and both folded sides together, they match up nice and neat. All right, now I'm gonna take my Holden Bond and I'm gonna make small strips and I'm going to just place them on three sides. And the three sides I'm placing them on are not the sides that I just did the fold because that's gonna be where I'm going to actually put the filling in in a little while, all right? And then just three small slices of that hold and bond. And then I'm gonna place my other side of my pillow on top of that, again, print down, and go ahead and iron that out. All right, and same with the others. Print down and iron it out, all right? And then what you're gonna see here is this little, like a little sack. It almost looks like just a little sack. And in this case, I'm going to just be stuffing these with regular cotton balls. And I do kind of separate them out a little bit though. And for each pillow, depending on how fluffy you want them, I'm gonna put in about three. You could do four if you want, or you could do two if you really wanted more of a flat pillow. And then once I do that, I take a little bit thicker chunks of that Holden Bond and I place them right at the top of this and then I'm just gonna iron it down and close this pillow off. Now I do wanna add a decorative trim. So I've cut off a piece of satin ribbon here in brown. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Holden Bond and add this piece as well. And then you can see what that looks like. It just adds a nice little decorative touch to the end of the pillow. Now for the pillow shams, I mean really for the pillows or the shams, you can just go crazy and just have a good old time. And you can just add all sorts of fun, different types of ribbon and different types of trims. There's just so many to choose from. I happen to have a little bit of burlap here that I'm gonna add into the end of this pillow here. I think it's gonna look really cute. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Again, I'm just shoving that down inside that pillow. I'm adding some of that Holden Bond. I'm ironing it down. And then once that's done, I'm gonna trim it up a little bit until I think that it looks okay. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna start working on a accent pillow. And I'm just gonna do a cute little roll accent pillow here. So I'm gonna grab that orange gingham that I have and I'm going to go ahead and stencil out a, a little square here. And when it comes to the roll pillow, really you can go really long because you could do it for like the foot of the bed as well. Or I'm just gonna have a little small one here. So I'm just doing about 
three inches long. Then I'm going to go ahead and trim up all the edges by adding the Holden Bond. And of course we're gonna use that iron. I'm just gonna do it on one bottom and then the edges on, and then both sides. So the bottom and the edges on both sides. Okay, and then once you have your little piece of fabric here, I'm gonna take just one piece of cotton in this case because it doesn't need more than that. And I'm just gonna kind of squish it down in there and then roll up that cotton ball until you get like a, almost like a little, little Tootsie Roll. And then I'm just gonna take one more piece of my Holden Bond and put it inside that edge so that it will hold together. I'm gonna iron that, get a little heat on it, and then there's what you got going on. Now, I'm gonna take a couple pieces of twine and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie up a little ribbon on each end and it almost begins to look like a cute little piece of candy. And then I am going to just cut down my twine ribbon there so it's not too long. You could do bows if you want, you could do, there's tons of applications here that you can purchase to really make it more decorative if you wanted to. But I'm gonna keep it a little plain because we have a lot going on with the bedding. All right, and there's my little accent pillow. And now it is time to decorate the bed. You guys, I am so excited to do this. So now I'm just gonna slip that right on over the bed. Make sure it's just nice and snug. There you go. And we'll put it in place and that bed might move around later on, I don't know. Now we're gonna add our shams with our burlap trim. We're gonna add our orange and gold pillows with the brown satin trim. We'll add our adorable little accent pillow. And then for fun, I added a little teddy bear. I think that that just really adds an additional touch to the bed. All right, and there you have it. Now, why did I have you put it on that card stock? Well, Bob, show us what's behind curtain number one. Christmas time, oh my gosh. You guys, what basically we've made here is press on nails for your miniature bed. I mean, is that the most adorable thing? And in this case, I use a little tinsel for the pillows. We've got a decorative little roll and a little snowman as an accent. And Bob, show us what's behind curtain number two. It's a gnome bed. Oh my gosh. All I'm doing is putting all these on this cardstock so I could just pull them up. I could just put them in a plastic bag and save them for the right season or the right holiday. And you could just continue to do this throughout the entire year. And it's simple and it's easy. There's so many options. I mean, honestly, I was going crazy at the fabric store. I could have bought so many more little fabrics. And now y'all, it's looking like freaking bed bath and beyond up in my house right now look at all of that it's just so fun you know you can go nuts and it's just not me who loves all this look who i found in the bed already it looks like she has crawled up in the bed and is enjoying a little nap and as one of my viewers said, she crawled up in the bed like a little shrimp and went to sleep. And I think she does look like a little shrimp. So I'm gonna be quiet and I'm going to say goodbye for now. See you next time. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope that you really enjoyed it. I'm Whitney and that's my little partner in crime, Tiny Whitney. If you could just like, subscribe, comment, and share. We really appreciate it. It definitely helps the channel. Today's video was a suggestion by viewers like you. So I'd like to take a moment to thank Heather Martinez and JoJo's mom for suggesting that I do smaller room boxes that fit in most homes. I also want to say thank you to the Cajun Craft who suggested that I show how to do bedding. If you have suggestions for me, please feel free to put that in the comments below. And you might be wondering what Tiny Whitney is doing over there. Well, she's watching true crime. If you've watched my show for any length of time, you probably know already that I am a true crime enthusiast and for some reason I just can't get enough of it. I recently had the opportunity to work with a YouTuber who does true crime. Her name is Kimberlea and you may recognize her here. She reached out to me asking if I could possibly help her with a tiny project and I was more than happy to accommodate her. In fact, it's such a secret project that I had to blur out my t-shirt because I don't want to give away any clues. So be looking for those videos coming up. I think her video will be dropping on November 6th 
or 7th and then I will probably do a video as well at least a short video just showing you all the really cool things that we did together so thank you so much for watching and remember in this crazy life it's the little things that matter <laughs>